So continuing where we left off, now we want to find the potential at point B, so V, B. And once again, we can use the same formula. But only this time, the integral is going to be a lot trickier, because things are going to get a lot uglier. So once again, dA, using the same argument I provided before, is going to be equal to r divided by the square root of 2 dr d phi. So how about eta? Because we're considering a point at point B, so you can actually draw out the diagram. So we have we have a cone, and then we're standing at point B somewhere over here. So if you're trying to get the distance uh, from a point on the surface to point B, so this line here, that's going to be our eta. So we can actually use this diagram to help us find what eta should be exactly. So let's enlarge this triangle that we see here. So you get something like this. So this is going to be point B. Here is going to be some point on the surface of the sphere. And this is going to be the locked in angle, power over 4. And this is going to be the origin. So we know that the height of the uh, cone is h. This is going to be a variable, so it's going to be r, so our radial component, because as, as we move along the cone, this r is going to vary. And as it varies, our eta will also vary. So you, you uh, obviously we can actually use a si uh, cosine law to find eta. So eta squared is going to be equal to r squared plus h squared minus 2rh cosine pi over 4. So we see that eta is actually equal to r squared plus h squared minus 2 over the square root of 2 rh. And so, uh, because this obviously looks ugly, so in order to save some steps in the future, I'm going to complete the square for this expression. It's going to come in handy. So when we complete the square, we get something like this. Square minus h squared to the, over 2 plus h squared. So if you don't believe this is these both of these are equal, this is just the simple uh, procedure of completing the square. You can expand this to prove that they're both equal. So this gives us the slightly cleaner expression. So something like this. So using this we can rewrite the integral into something that's that we can work on. So we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon. So once again, the bounds go from 0 to 2 pi for phi, and then from 0 to the square root of 2 times h for r. And then we have our dA. So dr d phi. And then divided by eta. So obviously this is this integral is rather intractable at this point. So the obvious thing to do is to try to use substitution. And then judging from the den denominator, we can actually substitute this with a uh, tangent. So I'm going to let this be equal to h divided by square root of 2 tangent theta. So this is going to help make this integral solvable. So uh, first of all, let me just get rid of the phi terms here. So there are no phi terms inside the integral. So I can just multiply 2 pi. So let's get rid of the, uh, the annoying symbols. So I'm just going to write that out. We have these. These are gone. We have uh, 1 over square root of 2 here. So this integral is no more. We've got rid of this. So now we ha we just need to deal with the r times dr divided by this thing over here. So for the uh, so let's consider this part first. So we're gonna have to take the derivative. So that's gonna be sequence square theta. So our dr is gonna be equal to h over the square root of two secant square theta d theta. So let's just substitute that in. So our dr is gonna be h over square root of two secant squared theta d theta. So we've gotten rid of this. So what is r? r is going to be equal to, so I'm just going to pull this out, 1 plus tangent of theta. So you can tell that from this expression here.
It's by definition. And for the denominator, you see that this is just tangent uh, h over h squared over two tangent squared theta. So this is going to turn into h squared over two one plus tangent squared theta. So if with the square root, this is going to turn into h over square root of two one plus tangent squared theta. That's going to just going to be secant squared theta. So you see that this is quite handy. These cancel out. And so let's also figure out the bounds. So if you substitute zero into this ex this expression, you see that the lower bound is going to be such that tangent to that lower bound. So tangent, the well, lower bound is going to be equal to negative one. So the lower bound has to be negative pi over four. And if you substitute the square root of two h minus h over the square root of two, you see that the tangent of the upper bound is going to have to be equal to 1. So the upper bound is going to be equal to power of 4. So we can move on. Let's just clean this up a bit. So this is, we have a sigma over 2 epsilon 1 over square root of 2 negative power of 4 to power of 4. And then let's try to get rid of some of these symbols here. So we have an h divided by square root of 2 that we can pull outside. So this goes away. So with the square root and the power of 2, we can get rid of this. And the secant, they cancel out. So in the middle, inside the integral, we're left with something like this, 1 plus tangent theta d theta. Well, this is actually a really solvable integral. So let's just move on. So where we left off, we have, we have this expression here. So I'm just going to merge the two square root of two twos together. And here I'm going to pull a trick. So you can see that tangent theta is actually a odd function. So tangent theta, negative tangent theta, is going to be equal to tangent negative theta. So if you go from negative pi over 4 all, all the way to pi over 4, if you have an odd function like this, this is just going to be equal to 0. It's going to cancel itself out. So actually, we can just ignore the tangent term, just keep the secant term. Well, secant is an even function. Even function as in secant theta is going to be equal to secant negative theta. So we can keep the secant and then get rid of the tangent. So that just gives us a secant theta. And then to simplify things even more, instead of going from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4, I'm going to go from 0 to pi over 4. Because from negative pi over 4 to 0, it's going to be the same as from 0 to power over 4, so I can just evaluate 1 from 0 to power over 4 and then multiply that by 2. So using this argument, I can simplify the integral into something like this. So obviously the 2's cancel out. And in case you don't know, this integral is actually equal to secant theta plus tangent theta. You can actually prove this fairly easily with a, uh, with a neat trick. You can multiply secant theta plus tangent theta to this expression and then use uh, substitution. You see that it actually works out. So substituting the numbers in tangent power over 4 is equal to 1. Secant power over 4, that's going to be equal to the square root of 2. Because cosine of power over 4 is 1 over square root of 2. And the minus natural log, tangent 0 is 0, secant 0 is 1. So this thing is equal to 0. So we get this expression here. So going back to the original question, so uh, just to remind you, this is the potential IP. So going back to the original question, we're trying to find the difference between the potential at point A and point B. So just getting back the results that we got just now. So the difference from point A to point B. So let's just find out point A. The potential is equal to sigma h divided by 2 epsilon. And then the potential of point B, which we just found, so natural log 1 plus square root of 2. And this is it. This is our answer. So let's just factorize this to make it look better. So this is it. This is our answer. This is our answer.